Hello again, friends, and welcome to Painting with Mr. Bates. I've got a canvas set up here. It's a 16 by 20, a triple primed, ready to go. I'm going to do a, a basic painting tonight. It's going to be a winter scene, a winter farm scene. Um, I'm going to attempt to do a barn scene. It's, it's pretty basic, just a barn, basic setup. Um, some snow, some trees, um, just, just a basic going there. So I'm hoping that things will work out. I've never done one before, so we're going to try it, see how it works out. Uh, show you my palette tonight, what I have going. This is the colors I'm going to be using. Uh, of course, I have my Rains Gray, Phalo Green, Crimson, Light or a um, Lake Blue, and I have some Titanium White. Those are going to be my primary colors I'm going to be using tonight. And as always, we will start off by preparing our canvas. Now remember I said, uh, just like with the oil painting, you can prepare your canvas ahead of time uh, before you begin painting. The only difference is, is unlike using the liquid white, where it's going to stay wet pretty much the entire time you're painting, you may have to go back and redo this <clears throat> as keep your spray bottle of water and give the canvas a pretty decent wet you don't have to soak it you don't want to do really soak it then you're just going to come back with a, a nice wide brush and just brush over it just like so get some of the excess water off Just like this. And our canvas has got a nice moist surface there that will make it much easier for the acrylics to spread. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to, this is drying kind of quick, so I'm going to moisten it one more time, just a light moisten. I have the fan on in here so it may dry quicker than I want it to tonight. That's okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm taking a little bit of my titanium white, a little bit of my lake blue, Mixed, mixing it up here and then got kind of a nice uh, really light blue color and right here beside it I have a gloss medium that I'm going to add to this and that's basically going to help to just just by touching just a tad to it it's going to help to give a little bit more transparency to our blue color here don't want it to be a, a we want our sky to be kind of a, a light, light colored sky. So I've got my two inch brush, I've got our paint loaded up on it. And just like always, we're going to start right up here in the corner. Start working our way across. And you see using that medium is also helping a little bit with the flow of our paint. I'm just going to go basically just like this. Now our, our horizon is going to come down a lot lower on this painting here. So we need to moisten one more time. Like I said, it's, it's drying pretty quick. And that's one of the reasons I've added the medium to this because... It's not going to do anything to the color, but it will give my paint a little bit more transparency. And it will also help with the flow, to help to make the flow of the paint a lot smoother. And we can get enough paint across our canvas. It's a pretty large canvas I'm using tonight. Not, not a really large, kind of a medium size. Uh, 16 by 20 again is the size of our canvas. Down 
down just a little bit. Like I said, we're going to have a pretty low horizon here on the painting. I'm going to keep going back and forth to take brush strokes out. Now, just as before, this is going to be a wraparound painting. So I'm going to come up here, release portion of this so that I can get a good hold on it. So I'm going to come up here and we're going to go all the way around. All the way. This gloss medium is really helping make the paint go further as well. There we go. All right, now I want to do something before the paint dries. I'm just going to take some paper towel. I'm not going to clean my brush, but I'm going to wipe off some of the excess paint. And there's a reason that I'm going to do that. And the reason would be this right here. I want to... I'm going to go in here and do just like this. Got a little, little hair from our paintbrush on there. That's okay. It come off every once in a while. All right. Now I'm going to wash this brush. And I'm going to take that paper towel that I just used. And I'm going to go... Say I went crazy because I'm just wiping the paint off after I put it back on. Not really what I want to do is I want to get some of that white background with the canvas bleed through. brush here. And just it's basically making that little circular motion. I want to give us the look of an overcast sky. I don't want to put a lot of white in there of clouds. I want it to be kind of a bluish, overcast sky. It is the look that I'm going for. Uh, you know, you get those really thin, over cl overcast cl uh, clouds that comes in. Really thin. The blue kind of bleeds through, and you have that really light, bluish, almost a bluish gray. And I may even come back with a really thin coat of white, over this, I'm not sure yet. We'll see how it looks when it dries. I'm going to come back to that. But I am going to come back in uh, really quickly before this completely dries. And I'm going to wipe this brush off. This two inch brush that I just used. So just come in here and just going to wipe off some of that excess paint that I just picked up from what I did. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to pick up some titanium white and just a touch, a very small touch of the range gray. Not a lot. I do not want a lot of that in there. Just enough to darken that white just just a smidgen, if that's even a measurement that we can look at. All right, now, once again, I'm going to 
most of this part of the canvas, I want this paint to flow freely. I mean, I, I want it to go on there like water. I don't want this to be a really dark painting. And I'm going to grab some more of that gloss medium. Just enough to give some transparency to this color here. All right, and I'm going to come in. All right, and I'm going to come in. We're just going to give just the indication of a of a snow covered ground. It's okay if some of that blue gets blended in with it. It's not going to hurt anything. Just want some soft. All right, this is this is turning out pretty good. About just about perfect for where I want it. I'm going to grab a little bit more of this titanium white. A little bit more of this medium. I want it to keep this flow that it has going here. And to keep going across. And like I said, I'm not worried if any of that blue blends into it. It's okay. And again, this is a wraparound painting. All right, there we go. I think I'm, I think I'm pretty satisfied with what I have here. What's going with this one right now? I'm, I'm really liking it. All right, I've got to go refill my palette. Clean a couple of brushes, and while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flip the painting. Just going to flip it over because this top edge is, is pretty dry now. I'm going to flip it over, go ahead and take care of the rest of the wraparound, get that taken care of, and then when we come back, hopefully we will start our process of laying out the barn. So we'll be right back, right after this little message from Magic for Kids.
welcome back. All right, I've got my border done all the way around, all with the sky and the ground area. I know it's hard for you to see from this angle, so I'm going to take and I'm going to uh, move the camera around just a little bit and just kind of give you an idea of what we have going on here. Uh, very light colors today because we want our barn scene to be the focal point. Uh, that's going to be what we're going to be the main focal point of of everything it's going to be today. So we're about to start that. Now what I did what I did is I came back in here and I went over that light blue with a titanium white mixed with a little bit of that gloss medium. And and let me show you for those of you that's not familiar with a gloss medium this basically this right here um, I picked this up at Walmart today um, now if I use this more more often I probably would end up uh, getting a higher quality one but this works really well and I'm going to show you one more thing too and this painting has been uh, I've already finished all of that touch up work that I've done to it for a few minutes now but it is still it's dry, but it's still tacky. So the one thing, one good thing about this medium is it also slows down the drying time just a little bit on our paint. So we've got this part laid out um, using the medium. And now this medium can be mixed with any color. You can mix with any color. It's not going to change necessarily the color of your paint. Uh, however, it will make it more transparent. Uh, so you use it sparingly. Um, Pretty much done with it right now. We're about to start in. We're going to work on our barn. I went back and I went ahead and added because I'm going to be using a good bit of the crimson uh, color for the barn on this. And so I went back and I went ahead and added me another uh, touch of crimson to the center of my palette. And we're going to be using Old Faithful, our palette knife, to go in. And just like I do with the mountains, we're going to go in and we're just going to kind of lay out the basic design of, of where we want our, our building to go and it's just going to it's going to rise up into the sky just sit kind of back off the horizon and i will i'll start in just like this working it in until we get ready to start working on the roof line as we go up so we're going to go in this is my first time of attempting to do um, one like this we tried our waterfall yesterday seemed to have worked out everyone seemed to have been pleased with it so we're going to grab some of our crimson. I'm just going to kind of spread it out here a little bit on the palette. I cut across. And it's okay if I get a good bit of the paint on my pa on a palette knife. That's what I want. I'm going to go kind of center ways of our canvas here. Just like this. And now I'm going to come over just a little bit.
And you see I'm leaving this opening right in the middle. That's naturally going to be our, our barn doors. All right. I'm going to put our pallet knife aside. And hanging right here. I'm going to grab a one and a half inch brush. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take and grab a color that we just placed onto the canvas. And just use the brush to blend those colors. I want, I want that crimson to blend in all the way around. Not so much worried about the ground area here because that'll be that'll be taken care of as we add in our tree line. All right. This right here will also take care of here shortly as we place our doors into it. But I wanted to get this wanted to get this spread onto the canvas before it dries. All right, so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna place this brush off to the side. I'm gonna go back to my palette, grab a little bit more of this crimson. And now we're gonna start laying in Our roof, I in the top portion of our roof here. Come over to this side. I could do this with a brush, probably just as easy, but using a palette knife it allows me to kind of spread a thick amount of paint onto my canvas. And again, I can hang my palette knife. I'm gonna go go back. I'm gonna grab that same one and a half inch brush. Just do some downward strokes, just like so. All right, I'll place my brush back over here. And I'm going to clean off my palette knife. Take some paper towels. Good thing about the metal, uh, the metal pellet knives is you can they're easy to wipe off. Just grab just a little bit of the rains gray. And I just want to. Put in a little bit of this right here. And I'm going to go back to my brush. And I'm just going to take. It's okay if some of that mixes into it. It's not going to hurt anything at all.
And remember what I said before, your paintings never look like identical to a portrait. Paints and photographs work completely different from each other. Photographs are naturally going to get the the full effect of everything. Whereas with painting, it is up to the individual artist. Scraping off just a little bit of this, I'm going to go back and I'm going to wipe off my palette knife. Grab a little bit more. Grab a little bit more of this crimson. I'm going to go back in and just kind of touch this up. If you work quickly enough. It is very possible to remove any mistakes just like you would with oil paints. Guys, you don't have to use a palette knife to do this. You can do it with brushes. I just don't necessarily care for the brush strokes and with using the brushes I would have a I would end up with a lot of brush strokes in this and I want a rustic look on this I really want a rustic barn look so that's the reason I'm not being too careful with my lines of everything being perfectly straight everything being perfectly the same color I'm not worried if some of the darker blends into it because I want to have that rustic appearance to it. All right, now we're going to grab some more of the crimson color here. As you see, I said I was going to use a good bit of that, and I have. All right, and I'm going to cut across, get some on here. All right, now we're going to come in here, and we're going to go just a little bit more of an angle here until we come up to our eave, to the top of the barn. loft all right here we go let me wipe off my palette knife one more time now like i said i'm going for a rustic look and with a rustic look here want to keep 
I want, I want to keep those angles not being absolutely perfect. Um, and I see as I step back, my roof line is not exactly where I would have wanted it to be, but I can fix that. Here in just a moment. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to take some of this paper towel. I'm moistening it. And we're going to do a quick repair. So, I know you're saying, well, how are you repairing it? Because you're just smearing it in. But the good thing is, is once I get part of that out, then I can go back and cover that just a little bit. So I'm moisten my paper towel one more time. And I'm pretty much getting the majority of that off. So I may not have to go back and do anything. No, I'm not. So, one more thing that you learned is how to do some repairs. Once this dries, you can pretty much treat it just like a blank canvas. There we go. As long as that paint is wet, you can pretty much do with it what you want. And we're going to come back we're going to put a snow line across the top of this once it dries. So I'm not too much worried about it being absolutely perfect right now. But I do want to come back. I do want to come back though really quickly. And I'm going to grab a half inch brush here because my, my inch and a half is too big. I'm going to grab a half inch brush here. Actually... I think I'm going to go rather, instead of the inch and a half, I'm going to go with a quarter inch angle brush. So I'm going to use that. To come in and pull our, our paint down. And remember I said the better the quality of the paint, the more you can do with it. That's the reason I like the Master's Touch. The Master's Touch paint is a really good paint. I get it at Hobby Lobby. It's not that expensive, but it is a higher quality paint, easier to work with. It blends really well. And it has a, a consistency thick enough that it's um, it's probably the closest thing that you could get to an acrylic being similar to the oil paints. As far as uh, how it uses, how it works, how it blends, and things like that. So I'm just using my using my quarter inch angle brush here. Do some final touch ups. Just like so. And then we're going to come back and I'll give this time to dry. I'm going to come back and I probably will touch up this piece right here and uh, make our um, connection from the top to the bottom. Make this a little bit lighter. Maybe go over it with a very thin uh, watered down coat of the crimson that I'm using. And then we'll come in and we'll add our barn doors here and we'll give our hopefully some depth right in here to get the indication of the, of the barn going back. 
all right so we're going to come back and then want to add in our trees things like that and right now i'm going to go clean my brushes clean my palette a little bit i'll add in for some more colors let's see where i'm going to go with that and then we will come back finish it up hopefully in the next segment so i'll be back shortly right now stay tuned to a message from specialty print Just wanted to uh, tell you what I've got going on here. I went ahead while I was waiting on everything else to dry. I went ahead and added in a few little details and basically just using a very small, uh, very small round brush. Oops. Here's another repair trick. All right. Back to our repair. Taking a paper towel. Wet it. And we're just going to dab away our mistake here. Most of this is dry now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to grab just a little small, a little small angle brush. And I'm going to grab some of that burnt sienna that I used for the sides. And just go back over it, just like so. And then we're going to repair this right here by adding a little bit more of the crimson. And there you have it. You've had two repair lessons in one painting lesson today. Mistakes happen and they're easy to fix. Go back and work on them. Now, one idea is I came in, and I'm going to turn my paintbrush around this way this time. I came in, and I went ahead, and I added some detail by putting in my wood tones, which was you know, the color of burnt sienna is what I used, and this black that I used here, I went over it with some burnt sienna, and then a mixture of the burnt sienna along with the uh, gloss medium to give it a transparent, very transparent look to put in my wood tone i uh, went ahead and filled in our uh, loft area and we left it going all the way through so that you can see through to give us some depth our barn doors is added using just uh, a little bit of titanium white and then trimmed out with burnt sienna and then again with a crimson to give our cross boards i've already started going across right here uh, with a fan brush and just some titanium white just to give the indication of snow top roof. Just like that. All right, just like that, using the fan brush to give our indication of a snow topped roof line here. And I'm gonna grab some more of that titanium white. And I'm basically using just titanium white. I don't want this to be very transparent, so I'm not using any of the medium on this. So just titanium white. And we're going to come in here on this side. And I'm just kind of not really brushing it on, but I'm kind of just, if, if you can see, I'm just kind of pushing it into the roof line just like so just pushing it in and now I'm going to come down and I'm going to go right along and you really won't see this in the painting once I get the trees in but I want to just give you an indication of some snow 
is built up along the along the side of our barn here. Just the snow's built up. Alright. Just use the fan brush to kind of kind of blend it in with the rest of the rest of the background here. So just using just some kind of upward pushing. Just to give the indication of a little bit of snow building up just along the wall. And like I said, I'm not too much worried about this area right here because that's going to be built in with our tree line. So I'm not going to worry about that. going to come back and we're going to figure out, we're going to look at this, decide where we want to put our trees. I'm now going to have at least two or three right in this area right here. So we'll be right back. All right, guys, welcome back. <clears throat> I went ahead and I added in uh, while I was uh, gone there for a break, and I went ahead and added in uh, a little bit of fencing here using some stenciling techniques. I've got some stencils that I used to add in the, the white fence. went ahead and added uh, a few trees in the background here. Again, using a fan brush. And I'm just going to grab some of the phalo green and a little bit of the Titanium white, maybe a touch of the of the medium there, that gloss medium, and we're going to come right over here, and we're going to put us a tree. We're going to let this one be coming off the off the side here. Now I didn't finish putting my fence line across because I knew I was going to put these trees on the side and I want to, them to be in the background. So I want to pull those, those fences to the foreground. I'm just kind of dabbing in the indication of a, of a nice tree right here. just like so and this is a wrap around so just go ahead and kind of kind of dab in the, the indications of that so we'll come back now add us in the trunk of the tree right here and we'll put a little bit of shadowing in i'm going to take my uh, fan brush that i'm using i'm just going to i'm just going to go off to the side and kind of kind of wipe off some of the excess and then we'll go over here and rinse it Rinse it off just a little bit. All right. I'm going to grab a little bit of this burnt sienna. I'm going to come right over in here to where the medium was at. That gloss medium. And then we're just going to lighten this up just as much as I can. Don't want a lot of paint on the brush. I'm just going to just like that. Just an indication of a shadow underneath there. I'm going to grab my inch and a half brush. And we're going to pull it towards the edge of the painting. Just going to pull it towards the edge. Just like that. Maybe there's, a little, maybe there's a little bit of dirt mixed in with that. All right, while I've got the fan brush, I'm going to go ahead and grab some of the range gray. Come up here and grab a little bit of that. A little bit of that white that's up here. That titanium white. And we're just going to come right off. 
our back side right here but this is a wrap around and then we're just gonna bring it around just like this and I'm just gonna kind of just kind of touch like that but right, you get the idea there of what I'm doing with this I'm gonna come back I may touch this up just a little bit wash this brush I'm gonna grab my my other fan brush and I'm gonna grab some of this blue some of that white don't want a lot a little bit more of that white in there like that right there and I'm going to take some, some paper towel we're going to blend it right back in I've got some more things I'm going to be putting in so I'm not too much worried about that but we've got this right here going <clears throat> we've got our we've got our barn going here i'm actually quite pleased with the way that it turned out on because it was the first one i've ever done it turned out quite well and i was pleased with the way that it worked with using a palette knife to apply the paint and, and especially doing it freehand uh, without sketching it out first getting an idea just freehand it on there with the palette knife and then come in with the stenciling to do our fence line going across right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take our fence line. I'm really probably going to stop it right about here. Because this tree will be coming up in front of us. You really won't be able to tell and see the fence line. So I'm probably going to just add just a little bit more. Bring it out to right up against the tree. And then this side over here, this tree is actually going to be behind the fence line. So I'll take that all the way across. And then I'm going to come back in and decide if I want to add. I'm debating on adding possibly a trail coming down right here. I may, I may not. Um, some more effects. I may come in and do a little bit more with the sky. Or I may leave it right where it is. I think I like this one the way it is, the way it's coming in. I know I probably add. Of course, I got to add my birds. I've always got to have my birds uh, coming in. Um, and you know me, I like birds. Every painting I do, I've got to have them. But we're going to come back and do all that. Um, we're going to add a little bit more of the titanium white going along the base of here. I'll come back and I will... Um, this is still just a little bit wet, so I don't want to do it yet. Let it just dry really hard. And I'm going to come back with a um, maybe a wood tone just to kind of highlight the fence area. So we'll have solid white going across, and then we're going to add in uh, just a little bit more of the snow look along the base of the fence. And I've got a surprise of some more stenciling that we're going to add into it uh, when we come back. All right, I'm back. Now, what I've done is I've, I've got my fan brush here, and I've got a little bit of the um, titanium white, a little bit of the range gray. I've actually taken and moistened my palette. I want that to be really a, a really runny material, really runny consistency. I'm going to add a little bit more right here. Now, all I'm doing, you can see I've kind of done some here. We're going to give the illusion that this is just an old fence line. You know, it's got some, I'm sure, paint wearing off of it. Animals is rubbed up against it things like that so we're just kind of just taking the corner of our fan brush and not really not really any particular way just kind of giving the indication of maybe some paint just got rubbed off uh, 
horses like to rub up against the fence and scratch themselves. Maybe maybe they've got some horses that has done that. All right, I've got that. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab one more thing that's great to have handy wipes. Just a box of baby wipes. All right, I'm going to just one, I'm going to wipe off my brush here because that was already really moist. And then I'm going to grab my palette. And where I mix those colors, I'm actually just going to take the wipe and just wipe away. Just like so. I'm wipe that off. That way I've got a relatively clean surface to work with. And I'm going to come back to my fan brush and I'm going to grab that titanium white, load up my brush. And just as we did across here, we're just going to just kind of, kind of push around to give the indications of maybe some snow banks built up around our fence line. I'm going to work it all the way to the edge, go around the edge, because this is a wraparound painting. Alright, we're going to do the same thing for this side. And I'm just, I'm just kind of pushing, using the brush just to kind of push the paint in, let it go up. Just like so. And then I'm going to grab some more of it. And I'm just going to touch around our branches on our tree. Maybe some snow is built up on the, on the branches. Same thing back here. Just on the tips. Just the indication of a little bit of snow on the tips of these evergreens. Not a lot. Perhaps the wind has blown some of it off. Can't forget this one over here. Just on the tips. Just like so. Grab a little bit more here. Now we're gonna, we're gonna build up some snow around around the base of the tree here. And again it's a wrap around, so All right, we are almost finished with this. I'm not going to put a lot in this. I just really don't want to. I, re I really want our focal point to be the barn, a few trees, and this this field area here. This this uh, we're going to call it a snow cover field. I'm going to let it stay relatively the way it is. Um, I am going to, of course, like I said, I've got to have my birds. Every painting has to have my birds. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of this uh, titanium white. I want I want to just kind of touch up this area right here, just like so. Maybe the animals have been over here playing around the tree. We've got this snow kind of kind of blend it up. We're gonna add our birds, of course. I've got to have our birds. There is no way around that. You know I've got to have my birds. But I want to show you one thing. What I wanted to do 
is I, I was actually going to go with a, with a much bigger barn but I decided I wanted some brightness. I, I wanted this this painting to stand out. I wanted it to be bright. So I went with a smaller one. But I wanted to show you once again. This right here. Uh, I said I wanted it to keep a rustic look. So I didn't want it to be perfectly straight lines. I wanted it to, to be an old barn. Um, so as with aging. Naturally the boards are not exactly straight. Our fence line again. We just came in after we uh, stenciled in our fence line came in and just with a little bit of the uh, rain's black mixed with a little bit of the, of the titanium white get a nice little soft gray tone and just basically scratch up the fence line that's what, that's what I wanted to do to scratch it up you know we've had a the horses has been out running and playing and we have a small horse we have a little miniature horse and trust me he loves to rub up against the fence so I, I can just imagine the horses running and playing and maybe they've got an itch and they're rubbing up against the fence over there alongside of the barn. So we're going to come back right now. I'm going to go ahead and figure out where I want to put my birds. I'm going to grab, though, really quickly, once again, the, the gloss medium. Putting just uh, just a little bit, just a little bit on my palette. I'm gonna grab the black or the range gray. It's, it's a black color. Mix those together. And again, what this medium does is it gives it a a transparent, not actually see through, but a, a real smooth smooth flowing finish or basically like when I add water to it and we're just gonna go maybe maybe there's a maybe there's a little bird coming in from the distance up here maybe there's another one I can barely see that one but then maybe we got one coming over the barn and I have another little little small one here in the distance way back off can't hardly see it and then maybe we've got another one coming in right here and the wipes come in handy for a lot of things and just like we've done repairs before I wasn't too satisfied with that bird there so wipe it off just like that Wipes come in handy for so much on paintings like this. Once that acrylic dries, you can treat this just basically like a blank canvas. All right. I wasn't too happy with that one, so I just took it off. There we go. Got that one coming in. And maybe there's a teeny tiny indication of one way off in the distance coming in. And then maybe there's one right here. Coming off, okay. So we're gonna gonna do this. I've got one more thing that I want to do, but that's gonna be a surprise for you to see when we come back. Um, don't want to put a whole lot into this. Again, I want the main focus to be the barn, and that's it. I, I just really want that barn to pop. But I got. A couple more things I want to add as a surprise. So when we come back, you'll see that. We'll sign off on it, and we'll call this painting complete. But we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. And as you can see, the surprise is there. I've added a couple of horses. It's out in the snow, running and playing. And no, I did not paint these freehand. Uh, these are stenciled in horses. I did go back and add in. You know, details I filled in the stenciling. Um, I'll show you what I used. These are the stencils. You can just get different kinds of stencils out. This is the fence line, a couple some horses. And basically just take and after I get the stenciling in, I fill in around where <clears throat> I fill in around where the 
uh, stenciling would have been. You would have had a lot of gaps there. I fill that in. Uh, just added a little, little bit of a um, little bit of movement, shadowing in the snow. Uh, we're running through the snow. Maybe it's the snow kicking up. I decided to leave this entire area open right here. It's just an open field, filled with snow. Horses just recently been let out. I'm going to sign off on this. We're going to call this one finish. I want to leave it open because, again, I want our main focus to be the barn. Um, that's that's the main focus of this particular painting today is the barn. Um, added in the fence line, a few trees here and there. A couple of horses stenciled in. I don't want to overcrowd this painting. I want, again, our focus to be the red barn, the old red barn. All right. I'm going to sign off on this. I'm going to grab my, grab my brush that I sign off with. I'm going to grab a little bit of the liquid, I almost said liquid white, a little bit of the uh, gloss medium, which is um, what we've been using. Just a little bit of that range gray. Mix it in there. I want to get a good flow going on this. A little bit more of that. With that transparent good flow going we're going to go down here and we are going to call this painting finished i'm going to sign off and there we go completed painting we're going to call this one the barn wasn't that difficult to do and if you decide to do one you can do it with a brush and paint it on with the brush that's perfectly fine nothing wrong with that i've just gotten used to using the palette knife and i kind of like the control of it i'm able to get some sharp edges with it oh, coming here I'm just doing the the light blue with the uh, overlay of the of the white and then i took and brushed off a good bit of that this down here, we went with a, uh, again, the lake blue, the titanium white, and put more white than we did blue to get our lower half down here. A few little trees, the fence was done with stenciling, uh, using titanium white, and then coming back with a mixture of rain's gray and the titanium white to give us the scratch marks. The horses were done with stenciling, came back in, filled in, I actually added the mane and did a little bit with the tail and added the eyes to it. Um, not that not that hard of a painting to do. Uh, again, our snow line here, just an angle brush to use that. And of course, you know, I've got to have birds in my paintings. And I decided not to put that many in it today. And we're going to call this painting complete. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you decide to try one, let it be your design. I looked at a painting. And you know what? I, I'll even show you the painting. Well, not necessarily the painting, but I'll show you the picture that I found online. And I liked it, and it gave me an idea, and that's what I allowed it to be, was just an idea. I thought, well, you know, I want to do a little red barn. But I decided I didn't want to put that many trees in it, because I wanted the barn to be the focal point. And just as I said just uh, in the last video... Um, comparing a painting to a photo, you're not going to get an identical comparison because naturally the painting is your paint's going to go on a lot different. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this one. This is a 16 by 20 size canvas, stretch canvas wrap around. Uh, wasn't that hard and didn't take a whole lot of colors. I used just uh, just a few, maybe maybe four or five at the most colors on this. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And we shall see you next time, or you shall see me. Until then, enjoy your painting.